Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech. Uh, today, we're honored to have with us Professor Tawana Coupe, who's the Vice Chancellor and Principal at the University of Pretoria. Professor Coupe is a highly accomplished academic and an expert in the field of media studies and journalism. He's also a strong advocate for partnerships, and we're very excited to learn more about the University Partnership Initiative and the African Global University Project. Very exciting, this. Uh, VC, welcome to the show. Could you please give me an idea of what the University Partnership Initiative entails? Yeah. So, so essentially, the University Partnership uh, uh, Initiative is about how universities can partner and collaborate to do the things that we are meant to do, develop new academic programs, do joint research together between universities uh, across the, the oceans, if you like, and also mentor and develop new, new staff staff members. So the genesis of this particular thing is actually came from, from, from within South Africa, interestingly. It's not actually a US initiative coming to South Africa. So what happened way back in 2018, the Department of Higher Education and Training has a program called University Capacity Development Program. What it does, as the name implies, is to actually, in essence, enable universities to do the things that I just referred to above. So initially they put in an investment, then they decided that this uh, uh, to do that way, South African universities and US universities should create a network. We normally call it the US South Africa Higher Education Network. And they funded it to, to the tune of 44 million and a total of 12 projects involving 14 South African universities and 17 US universities. I think it was a good, good program. So 38 exchanges transpired between those universities and in, in both countries. It benefited 102 doctoral students. One of the things we need in South Africa is to train more PhDs. If you go to the National mm -hmm. Development Plan, many people have, have forgotten. One of its objectives is to increase the number of people with PhDs. Well, let me just give you a stat. 48% of academics in South Africa on average have a PhD. The investor with the largest number of academics with a PhD is investor Pretoria at 70%. Our mm -hmm. other competitors, our other other investors in the top five are in the 60s somewhere. Let me not mention names. <laughs> in 2020, then the US uh, uh, embassy it decided to put in just about 500,000 US dollars to strengthen and expand the network because of the, 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 the such beautiful outcomes that had come from the mm -hmm. initial investment from South Africa, if you like. So the summit was in a sense then now to reflect on, on this very good story and to say, how do you scale up? How do you take it further? Because it actually does work. And by nature, our, our enterprise, if you like, our academic institutions work best if there are collaborations across institutions, between and institutions across continents and different perspectives. Because you learn more and you soon also discover that you face the same problems but they might be contextually different. There is poverty and inequality in the US, but perhaps not on the scale of South Africa, but it is still poverty and inequality and exclusion and so on. So how does knowledge and research come, can be, how can knowledge and research be used to address these societal challenges, if you like it? So that is why the summit was called Equitable and Sustainable Partnerships for Impact. And it's remarkable to see it driven out of the global south, so to speak, because so often you see yeah, these absolutely. initiatives almost yeah. imposed top down. And I think there's a yeah. sense of agency that we lose uh, when we enter into a partnership in that in that way, in that manner. And there's a lot that we can learn uh, from each other as equal partners through something like this. Absolutely. And we know yeah. Broadly in society, yeah. we need to up our research and development. Our R&D is still below yeah. where it really should be, according to the National Development Plan. So it's so a really yeah. great societal benefits. What benefits does the partnership bring to the University of Pretoria? Well, we were the host. So if you are the host, you <laughs> you 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 get you get a rub from the, the success. It was a rounding success. So well we as the host it dropped off on us. But also it's a it's it's a, one of the things that was a benefit was to affirm our belief that partnerships are the way to go. So the African Global University mm -hmm. Project which you referred to, is exactly about that. It's exactly about the investor of Pretoria being a South African university, NKD, but being much more of an African university, in other words, connected and working with universities on the rest of our own continent. If you go to America, you find they work very closely with Canadian universities, then across the Atlantic with European universities, because 
of the historical cultural ties and so on. But also we at the University of Pretoria believe we're not just South African and African, we are also global. And, and so the African Global University Network is how do you stitch together or how do you craft partnerships across the continents and across the seas? And how do you make them mutually beneficial? And also how do you in a sense then address local and global challenges? And we found it here. And I think we were chosen to host it partly because in the original initiative I mentioned, I forgot to say it was invested, the one funded by DHET for 44 million. It was investor of Pretoria, it was investor of Rutgers, Newark, and University of Venda. And, and that is the spirit also of uh, African global universities. Not just uh, networking together with your, your Ivy League and Oxbridge, but also universities that are somewhere in the middle because they often actually do much more heavy lifting. Ivy League, Oxbridge, <laughs> they are fairly elite research institutions. Mm -hmm. But an institution like a land grant university in the US, Michigan State University is a great example. They were here. They have an AAP partnership. We can talk about it for a time. Or, you know, a Manchester University or Sussex University or some of the London universities. They have another thing to do. Train high caliber professionals from accounting to veterinary, you know, veterinary surgeons, doctors, nurses, and all of that, engineers and all of that. That kind of heavy lifting has to be done by certain kinds of universities that actually both the research mission, the teaching mission, human capital development, and also the society, the social engagement uh, uh, initiative. So linking all of those across the world brings a power of knowledge, if you like, to, to transformative endeavors and perhaps closer to achieving the sustainable development goals, national development plan here, or Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. So so, so if you like it, the, the, the art of this, Michael, is university is also saying, we must be intentional about our responsibilities and what we ought to deliver to society. Not just right. be prestigious elite ivory towers behind our fences, you know, because yeah. that is what we expected to do, but society expects us to say something and do something about the Absolutely. challenges we face. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean, in the South African context, I think one of the focuses of the program, as you mentioned, is this this key imperative to develop human capital. Ricardo Hausman often mentions that countries yeah. don't develop without that key stock of human capital development. We yeah. need to strengthen yeah. our institutional, yeah. economic, physical, and and public roles that universities should be playing in shaping society. Yeah. So to Absolutely. date, how has the initiative helped UP to address these these really big hairy audacious goals yeah so i think what we we we, we saw also is that covid was a challenge for everybody so not just mm. up but up as well we found that suddenly during covid you could bring some of our expertise and knowledge so up for example had a, a, an on-site for vaccinations but also people from neighboring communities could actually use the vaccination site we use a lot of our students. Some of our students used to actually became musicians. My American students produced a rock song called Vac Vaccinate, Don't Procrastinate, which was quite popular. And some other institutions asked for it. We also were given, we also took up the responsibility to house uh, homeless people and to ensure they were vaccinated because with homelessness and drifting around was a COVID trade as well. So we took responsibility also for vulnerable populations. We also actually on the go changed our community uh, 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 medicine modules in real time to address the situations of communities affected by COVID. And so then that, that was a light bulb for us to say actually, we often talk in general terms about impact in, in, in society, but actually here is a real situation where we are able to to deliver it in real time. We were manufacturing mm -hmm. PPE using 3D printing uh, from our library and from other of our laboratories and also able to, if you like, produce um, sanitizers as well uh, for our own use and also for, for use by other communities. So we could demonstrate the direct link, if you like, between knowledge produced in universities and also addressing a, a direct challenge. We also, uh, been, have been very for, fortunate that our collaborations and partnerships has brought us two million pounds in a research project called sustainable creating sustainable food solutions, sustainable food uh, systems rather. And you know, food is at the heart of good health, good development, 
proper achievement and all of that. And and so in this partnership includes Leeds University in the UK, um, and it includes Magerere in, in Uganda, University of Nairobi in Nairobi, then University of Ghana in Ghana. But we've now layered other partners, uh, Montpellier University in France, layered Michigan State University, Illinois is joining in. So we're building, wow. building you know, more tentacles across, across the world because food poverty, if you like, or hunger yeah. and all of that, which uh, stunts mm-hmm. children and all of that and increased bad health and so on. It's a global issue as well as it is a local issue. So how do you actually now build, you know, climate-friendly agriculture? Because agriculture, we know, can also be a destroyer of the environment. But there are sustainable ways of doing agriculture that are environmentally friendly, enhance people's capacities and so on. And we do this not just as academics. We do it with farming communities. So in our network on sustainable food systems, we have a policy network. We have a network of farmers inside spread across the continent. Because we also realize as universities, knowledge does not lie in the university alone. We might have the high level knowledge, but actually people working the soil and working the ground, even people yeah. working in, in an informal sentiment, have a daily knowledge for survival. How do you harness that with high level knowledge to actually produce sustainable societies? And societies, if you like, where you know the indignity of poverty, inequality, unemployment, is dominant yeah. remarkable and um, from what it sounds like uh, from being the bridge between academia and communities and this practical knowledge versus this higher order knowledge linking global institutions at the very top to those that so desperately need help uh, in in South Africa and the rest of Africa as well it sounds like an extremely complex undertaking and you know having held the first ever summit for the university partnership initiative and looking back at it to the journey to get to this point I mean, how complex was it to pull this all together? And what would you say was your favorite part of the summit? Mm. No, I think the, you know, no, no, Michael, it was interesting. I remember when I closed the summit, I said eight sessions, two cocktails. One cocktail was held at the American ambassador's house, <laughs> the ambassador Ruben Brigetti, the second, a very good friend. The other summit was held at UP here at the Java UP Art Center. I've never seen a uh, good many, haven't been an academic since I was 25, and now I'm over over 50. <laughs> I've never seen a summit or a you know, conference of academics follow what it said it would do. Very eight sessions running every day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. With, of course, occasional tea and lunch breaks, but really being focused and also the sharing of experiences and models and modalities of partnering in order to achieve equitability and mutual benefit. I've never, that was astounding. And like I say, in my job, I go to these things every year, but this yeah. will remain in my memory for focusing on the issues that you said. Because, you know, sometimes in academia, we all over the place, you know, relevant, irrelevant, indirectly. So <laughs> you know, we're thinking about for one session to the next, you can say I could have done without this. And I said through all of them, although you know I have other responsibilities. From day one to day two, eight sessions, two cocktails, I was there. Yeah. Remarkable. Now, obviously, we look forward to a great future for this collaboration program because the momentum yeah. is now there. Uh, so, what absolutely. tangible yeah. benefits can we expect right to right. see? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, let's look at the future. Where do you see it going from here? I think the future. One of the things that we discussed there was that first bilateral. It's easy to do, say University of Pretoria and Leeds or University of Pretoria and Michigan, but multilateral is better by intention. Uh, Kyle uh, Fambri, who is the president of the invest, was part of the initial DHET funded uh, initiative when he was at Radcast uh, uh, Newark. So lots of people left the blueprints for further discussions to solidify agreements. And also the network itself, I think, is going to grow to include more African universities, more uh, U.S. universities, and so on. So I think a a notion of stronger together, multilateral is better than bilateral, critical mass and scale is going to be the the, the future of uh, academic uh, partnerships and and, and creating networks. And again, being careful to include capacity development for PhDs, given that that is a, a, a clear challenge on our side, 
Second, also developing new programs together and also choosing research topics that align with the uh, uh, societal challenges from poverty, inequality, unemployment, sustainable food systems, climate change, you know, sustainable food systems, uh, transportation systems that are environmentally friendly and fit a particular context. So all of those, you know, people left, I think, brimming with ideas for both collaboration mm -hmm. and own specifics. Because, you know, there is a culture sometimes in academia where we sign memorandum of understanding. They are generally very empty and they generally get lost in their file away and not, nothing happens. But what yeah. the summit did was actually to front end content and then so when you agree, you actually know what you have a roadmap for what you're going to do. Mm. And and one area that we absolutely need is greater than commercialization, uh, full societal benefit yes. of the great R and D that comes out of these uh, yes. initiatives. Yes. It's one thing yeah. the US universities. So you remind really me, there at. was a big session on. Yeah, there was a big session on innovation uh, uh, coming out of research, but social innovation as well as 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 as, as commercial innovations, and which uh, of which there is plenty in universities, but again might be in drawers, journal articles and papers and, and conference proceedings, but you know, it doesn't see the light of day. Well, fantastic, Professor Tawana Kupe. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor and Principal at the University of Pretoria for sharing more about the University Partnership Initiative and the African Global University Project. We're very grateful for your insights and your time. Uh, and thanks so much for joining us here on Business Talk on Business Tech. Take care. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Yeah, glad to be here.